Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, understanding one of knife making's coolest tools, the hydraulic forge press. This is a hydraulic forge press. It's one of the most powerful and versatile tools in the bladesmiths and the blacksmiths arsenal. Today, I'm gonna to help you understand exactly what it is, what it does, and why it's such a game changer for Smiths. This video is sponsored by Riverside Machine, makers of, yep, hydraulic forge presses. Now back in the good old days when everything was done with muscle power, a blacksmith or a bladesmith who wanted to move a lot of metal fast would have to grab a bunch of fit young apprentices to blast away with sledgehammers. Now apprentices get tired, they eat a lot, they have to have enough skill that they don't miss their mark and break your hand with their sledgehammers, and sometimes they sneak off to dark places with your daughter. A machine like this, none of the above. It moves metal, period. Just for a demonstration, I've heated up a piece of three quarter inch bar in my forge. I'm gonna whale away on it as hard as I can and see what happens. Oh man, I do this for a living and I'm tired already. Now, let's stick a piece of it just the same size, same heat, into the forge press. Wow, big difference. And more to the point, my elbow isn't killing me when I'm done. So how does a hydraulic forge press work? Well, basically you have this big steel frame. Down here you have a motor and a pump. Then you have a foot control here. And then inside the machine you have the heart, which is a hydraulic ram. Now this ram, in this particular case, produces about 25 tons of force. That's enough to pick up 14 Toyota Priuses. No, I mean literally. 14 Priuses, and that ram drives these removable dies to do the actual metal squashing. This particular press is controlled with a foot pedal, though occasionally you'll see them with a hand-operated lever. Press the pedal down, the ram drives the top die down, let it go, it goes back up. Now before I talk in more detail about how and why you might want one of these, let me clarify something. Sometimes people get presses confused with power hammers. The difference is actually pretty simple. A press moves fairly slowly because it's driven by a hydraulic ram, whereas hammers use any of a number of different mechanical schemes to drop a big old chunk of steel onto a little anvil. Same basic idea as a hand hammer, only bigger. While I'm on the subject, I often get asked about whether you can use hand crank presses like this 249 buck model I shot a picture of at Harbor Freight a couple days ago. The answer, sadly, is no. There's no substitute for a mechanical press like this one. Here's why. This engine hoist uses the exact same principle as a hand-operated press. See how slow that moves? This versus this. Why does that matter? Because the whole time the dies of a press are in contact with the steel, they're sucking heat out of that steel, and cold steel will not move. Now let me take a sec to talk about my personal experience with this press. This is a Riverside Machine Uncle Al press. As I said, Riverside is sponsoring this video. Now, if you wanna know how good their machines are, look no further than this. I bought this machine with my own money over two decades ago. Since then, I've replaced this switch maybe a couple times. I've greased these guide bars and I replaced the starter capacitor on the motor right down there one time. And that's it. Still runs today as well as it did the day that I rolled it into my shop. But that's not all that Riverside has to offer for knife makers and smiths. 
Riverside also makes all kinds of cool jigs and guides that'll help you make better knives, including this beast of a filing guide. So whether you want a brand spanking new press or just want to check out some handy tools that'll improve your knife making, check out riversidemachine.net. So why would you choose a press over a power hammer? Several reasons. First, you get a good deal more bang for your buck with a press. Pound for pound, power hammers are much more expensive, complex, whatever, than presses. And the cheaper ones are cheaper because they're lighter and have less powerful hammers. Look, power hammers are great. I would love to have a big old Nazelle 3B, but the last one I saw for sale cost literally 10 times what this press did and weighs like 8 billion pounds. A power hammer also takes a fair amount of skill. You can get up and running on a press in no time, which is great for beginners. A hammer, especially a powerful one, will screw things up a lot faster than a press if you aren't skilled at operating them. Now, honestly, presses and hammers are both kind of noisy. But try running a big old slamming hammer in most suburban neighborhoods and some nosy neighbor, you know, that guy, is liable to call Johnny Law on you. Presses, on the other hand, make a noise that's a little closer to weed eaters and leaf blowers and other tools that don't freak out your neighbors. I ran mine in a suburban neighborhood for 20 years without attracting the unwanted attention of the city fathers. Last point, hammers will break a floor to bits if that floor is not built heavily enough to stand the pounding. So what are hammers good for? If you're doing production forging, a powerful hammer can be a beautiful, beautiful thing. But let's get back to what presses are good for. The first thing that presses are just indispensable for is making Damascus steel. Setting a weld on a big stack of steel works super easily with the nice big flat surface of a flatting die. You can do it with a hand hammer, but a press is much more consistent and helps you get better welds. Just slide the billet in, a couple gentle bumps, and inside of a second or two, a bunch of individual pieces of metal have been converted, almost as if by magic, into a single block of steel. But then comes the most important part, drawing out the steel. If Damascus steel was just about making a huge fat chunk of steel, you could do it all by hand. Thing is, it's not. Once you squish the steel together, you have to draw it out into thinner bar stock in order to make a knife or maybe to fold it over and do some other things to it. And that's where those 25 tons of mojo come in handy. Just about every smith on the planet's tried to make Damascus steel by hand. Two weeks later, they find themselves ordering a press. In a world without apprentices, a press or a power hammer is just an absolute must for making Damascus. Speaking of drawing out, another place where presses shine is breaking down stock into thinner sections. If you want to forge a 5 8 inch round bar into a knife, you first have to flatten it out into a bar. A press makes really easy work of that job. 15 minutes of hard work with a hand hammer just takes a couple minutes and far less physical work. And what about something like this? You can just forget about breaking down a big piece of steel like this by hand. I know some of you guys out there thinking you're super tough and you can do it. Go ahead. Try it. That brings up another point. I've shown these dies. You just pop them in, pop them out. The most basic die is a flatting die. Some people call them flattening dies, which does just what it sounds like it does but you can tailor other dies to all kinds of specific tasks. Widening material, lengthening or drawing out material, creating ripples and other specific patterns that you'd use for ladder pattern or similar types of Damascus. You can square up round stock and Damascus billets. You can forge dowels and reins for tongs. There's just an endless number of dies that you can buy or make that'll help you do specific forging tasks. Let me point out a feature of my machine that's changed for the better on the new Riverside Uncle Al press. 
On my machine, you can move this little bolt from here to here, and that'll allow you to limit travel as the jaws open. That can be handy because it makes it work a little faster. But on many new machines, including the Riverside machine, you can vary travel infinitely in both directions. So, not only does this allow you to set the opening, which saves you time, it now allows you to set a closing limit too. In the good old days, meaning on this machine, when you wanted to flatten something to a particular uniform dimension, let's say you wanted to forge a round bar down to, say, a quarter inch flat stock, you'd have to put some sort of block into the die to limit downward travel. Not anymore. Many newer forge presses, including Riverside's current model, will allow you to set the downward travel. Not only does this mean you don't have to worry about making little gizmos like this, but more importantly, you can set it for an infinite number of stock sizes. It also means that you don't have to worry about overshooting with a drawing die and making your stock too thin, which frankly is pretty easy to do with older style machines like mine. So let me wrap up with this all important question, and this is one I hear all the time. If I'm just getting into forging knives, do I need a hydraulic press? The answer is absolutely not. I do most of my knife forging, that is actually shaping the knives by hand. But if you get serious about forging knives, at some point you're gonna wanna forge Damascus. And when you do, well guys, you'll be reaching for the checkbook. And a few weeks later, some dude with Donnie embroidered on his shirt will be pushing one of these into your shop. And after that happens, you won't be sorry for a single minute. All right, guys, thanks for watching and see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. Walter Sorrel's blades dot com.